Crazy Craft series, I'm doing a lot of stuff within the TARDIS, so I thought I'd show y'all around and teach you a little bit of something, something about this thing. It is my baby. So let's get, let's begin. Well, first thing, as you can see, I have a TARDIS key. Now you don't find these anywhere in the world, and you don't just find the TARDIS anywhere in the world. Now what you do, well, I'm just find, here we are. You will find Contron crystals every. Well, not everywhere. I find them mostly in the YouTube statues, but you can also find them in random dungeons. Uh, I think there's a chance you can also find them in chests and like in villages. But so they do spawn in uh, inventories around the world. You can't mine them or anything like that. Reason being is you have to make them. But first one you do have to find. Anyways, so you take the Contron crystal, you get four pieces of iron, and you craft the TARDIS key. Now this one says Owner Super Rhino, obviously. But when you craft your own, you will get your own little key. And then once you right-click it on the ground, the TARDIS will spawn right in front of you. And it makes this awesome TARDIS noise. If anybody ever watches Doctor Who, it is awesome, which I believe we will hear that sound later. Anyways, so once you're in here, you walk up. And as soon as you walk up right here, you will have your sonic screwdriver. It's just sitting in your console right there. Okay? So you right-click it, and boom. You have your sonic screwdriver. Okay, right now it is in reconfigure mode. Now, in order to change that, you shift, right click the ground, and now you can see it says schematic mode. And mine is set to corridor normal. We'll fix that. Um, now it's back to dismantle, back to reconfigure. Right now I'm going to leave it at schematic because for anybody who is new to this mod, first thing I will recommend you come around to the back side. Of your center console, put your sonic screwdriver, your sonic screwdriver, bleh, da, 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 your sonic screwdriver in right there, and you see it set to corridor normal. Now you can click these top two buttons, and it changes what type of room it is. So you got corridor lifts, corridor junctions, corridor rooms, back to lift. Okay. Right now I'm going to set it to rooms, and library is the one I want. But you can also change it to big chamber, medium farm, medium chamber. But right now I want library. And then you just right click it again. Okay. The reason I am setting it to library is because in the library is a lot of information that will help you with this mod. So if you come over to one of the walls, you see there's red there. Color does not matter. So you got red, blue. It says primary and just regular door but make sure it is set to schematic and you just right click the square and boom it makes your room this is the library and just to show you that the door does not matter we'll come over here to the red door as well boom another library and as I said in my crazy craft series I'm pretty sure the amount of rooms you can make is almost unlimited I'm not sure how many I've never reached a limit in any of the series I've ever done with this mod so don't worry too much. I like doing the big rooms and making all kinds of personal farms because it's safe in here. Anyways, now that you have the library, come over here and it has all the information, all the basic information you could use. It tells you how to fly it, you got console, tells you all the different sides and all the information. Take off, drifting. I have never done drifting. So if you're looking for information on drifting, you're in the wrong place. I'm sorry. I know I should cover everything, but I have never done drifting because I usually just do take off and lands. Anyways, you got crafting, which I will go through all this stuff except for temporal dirt. Never used it, never found much of a purpose for it because most of the mods I usually use has some form of farming boost, so I just don't use the temporal dirt. Anyways, and tools. Sonic screwdriver, gravity lift, I will cover most, th most of these. Okay? But, so yeah, all the information is here in the library. That's why I recommend getting a library. Well, as I mentioned earlier, the Contron Crystal. Once you have your TARDIS, you can make more crystals. Reason being, um, because they are used in a couple recipes, but mostly if you're in a, uh, in a, a server, 
you can give the crystal to your friend, let him craft a key, and let him get his own, him or her, get their own TARDIS. So, always being friendly. But as far as other recipes go, involving the Conchon crystal, let's see here. Wands. I know I should have memorized which chest was which. Here we go. You have your basic Artron battery. Now, when your TARDIS is flying, it creates energy, which you can check right over here. Let's see, right now, it sets, it was at 59. That's because I have piece, uh, equipment down there running and taking the energy. But what you can do is create these batteries, and so when it flies, if you have nothing running, it will save, build up energy. You got the basic Artron battery, which I should probably go through these first. So, starting off with the temporal library. Simple, six iron, glass, gold, redstone. And that creates your temporal laboratory. You need this for a, pretty much all the recipes on the TARDIS. And yes, the, on the TARDIS is requirement. So you craft your temporal laboratory, and you set it up just like so. You have a hopper feeding into the top, and a chest directly underneath. And as you can see, this one is running, this one is not, and this one is running. See, I just turned that one off. So how come this one is on but not running? Well, certain recipes require that the TARDIS be in flight. It means it actually has to be moving for it to work. Some of them do not, such as these two. This one, you can't see, but I've got gold in there. All you do is you put gold ingots in the hopper, like so. See, it starts taking them out. It's putting it into the laboratory. And it starts making dialectanium ingots. And that's what you saw earlier and what I'm going to show you for the batteries. It does take a while, so... Yeah. But anyways, this one has iron in it. Put iron in here, see it's still going to feed it. It still has an inventory. Let's see. If I break it, see, if you break it, you get what was inside of it but it knows that it's put, I'm putting iron into it so it's not running because it has to be in flight. And that gives you the other ingot. Let's see here. No. Yeah, why search for it? Here we are. Chronosteel ingots, which is what makes your basic Artron battery and your advanced Artron battery. So now that you know how to make those, I will show you the flight in a minute. So you got your chrono steel. Remember, you have to fly the TARDIS in order for it to build up energy. So you have your basic Artron battery, and then surround it again with the same pattern of dalekanium and chrono steel, and you get your advanced. Obviously, advanced is better; it holds more. But like I said, it takes a while for the ingots to form, so you're gonna be waiting a little bit. And now for the Contron crystal. It's a little bit more difficult. There's nothing in here. It requires diamonds and ender pearls. I put two stacks of ender pearls in here because I put a whole stack of diamonds. Only need half. So it's one to one, one diamond, one ender pearl. And it takes a while. In fact, I'm just going to turn this off. Well, yeah, let's just break it. And I'll put the gold back in there. So now this is taking all the energy. I put a half stack of diamonds and two stacks of ender pearls. Give it a while, and it will make a Contron crystal. Just to show you, I'm not lying. Let's go in here to the library. We got crafting lab. Oh, wrong lab. Contron. There we go. Diamond. Ender pearl. Contron. Boom. Okay, now roundels. These are a very important piece of building a world inside the TARDIS. Okay, if you switch it to dismantle mode, sorry, reconfigure mode, my, uh, my apologies, and you right click a roundel, ooh, listen to that noise, that is so awesome, it reveals the wiring underneath. Now, first of all, the roundels are the source of light inside the TARDIS. Okay, take the cover off, and you see all the wires exposed reason you can do that is because you can attach machines inside the TARDIS. And the way you do that is not just with basic pipes and wires, no. You have to have cable inter TARDIS cable interfaces. 
Now this one is an ME cable, which is for Applied Energistics, but Applied Energistics is not in this mod pack, so there is no recipe to get these. And same for Ender IO with the Energy Conduit. So these are uncraftable in my mod pack, but if you add Applied Energistics or Ender IO, it does have an interface compatible with it. But I do have an item duct. Obviously what that does is it allows you to attach pipes and other stuff to it. And all you do is you right click it and you can see it's attached there. Oops. Creative mode not good for that. So anyways, you attach it and then you can attach, let's see what pipes, I don't even... Okay, see I don't know what mods are in this, so I'm not sure what kind of pipe I'm supposed to attach to this. I'm used to using the Applied Energistics part. I love Applied Energistics, but I didn't want to cheat the mod pack and add it in there. Let's see here. There, this is all vanilla. No conduits. Not entirely sure. But here's the recipe. We've got four gold nuggets, three iron ingots, and two chests. And it gives you eight of the item ducts. Okay. Another one is the fluid duct. Same as an item duct, but instead it moves fluids. Only difference is instead of chests, you have buckets. Still three iron, four gold nuggets. And gives you eight TARDIS cable interface fluid ducts. Okay, so that is all the recipes up here. Now for the fun part. I'm going to empty this. Oh, need my sonic screwdriver. Now for the fun part. Flying the TARDIS. Oh. It's really a lot easier than it seems. First thing you gotta do, okay, is you come up here, and you see you got your console, ener your energy gauge, rooms counter. Oh, it tells you you can have 30. Well, there you go. 30 of those giant chambers. Let me show you the giant chamber, just because that is the one I like using the most. I know, I'm all over the place tonight, I'm sorry. Big chamber, there we go. And... Boom. Look at how huge that is. Now imagine 30 of these. That's right. Also, if you've created a room and you didn't like it, like I've created two libraries here, switch your song screwdriver to dismantle mode. There's a blue square in the center of every room you make. You right click it, you'll get the little pop up, shift right click, teleports you back to the center and gets rid of that room. So you can delete rooms you don't do not like or do not use anymore. So that is an awesomely handy feature. Let's see. You have to right click, shift right click. Oh. Right click, shift right click. Uh, apparently I was in uh, reconfigure mode. Yep, see right there. Anyways, back to flying the TARDIS. So right here, you have Z control. For those of you who do not know, there are three coordinates. Oops. There are three sets of coordinates. You have your X coordinate, your Y coordinate, and your Z coordinate. Okay? X and Z are similar, one's up and down, one side to side. Y is your height. It's how high above bedrock you are. Okay? So remember that. So you have your Z-coordinate settings over here, and for a little help, if you right-click right there, see it brings the console over and it shows you a number. You right-click, okay, that one's all the way up, so if you right-click over here, you see the number going up. If you shift right-click, it should go down. There you go. It's not 100% exact, and it is a little bit finicky, so it, it is difficult to try and get it to land exactly where you want it to. So, have fun messing with that part. Same over here, you have your Y's. Right click. And Overworld. I'll show you that in a second. But, change your Y coordinate. Let's see. Okay. Now, dimensions. The TARDIS can go through dimensions. Yes. Now, first of all, you see I'm in dimension 2. That is the TARDIS. We switch to dimension zero, that is the overworld. 
go ahead and visit the, the nether. That is dimension negative one. Okay, you have to know these. You have to have these numbers. Okay, so if you come down here, dimension lever, shift right click, Wakanda. That is part of the superheroes mod. Dimension eighty. I believe that's or spawn eighty one as well. Eighty two. Mirror. Okay. 83 is or spawn. Torment. 38. Okay. 84 is or spawn. Spirit world. Okay. Chaos dimension. That's or spawn. Mars. Superheroes. Huh. I'm guessing spirit world. I don't know. But you can't do it right off the bat. You have to level up. Experience there is. As you fly, you gather experience, and you also have to build the batteries to get energy, because you can see it only contains a thousand energy. And if I were to try taking off right now, let's see, where's the button? There it is. not giving me the notification. Well, I guess it's a good time to show you the three steps to taking off. Once you get all your coordinates set, come over here to the left side console. There's a button here, the temporal primer. Right click it, it'll go down and it'll stay down for a couple seconds. While it is down, you run over here to the back side, you right click the helmic regulator, then come back over here to the front and the quantum handbrake. There it is. Not enough energy to change dimensions. At least 2,000 energy is required. Okay? So you do have to have extra energy. And there's also upgrades. These are permissions for if people get into your uh, TARDIS, what they can and cannot do. See? Fly color the TARDIS. Yes, you can recolor it. Never wanted to. So, I love the white classic TARDIS. Recall, transmat. There we go. As you level up your TARDIS, you gain exp the points, in which case you can upgrade See, upgrade energy level, upgrade regen level. When you're inside the TARDIS, you do have regen. Shields level, max rooms. Oh, so you can see, you can even increase the amount of rooms. <gasps> and your sonic screwdriver. Control permission lights. See, you can even change stuff about your sonic screwdriver. Okay. So, most of it you just have to mess around with, but anyways. So, back to flying the TARDIS. Now, since now we know that you cannot change dimensions, let me... That's the TARDIS interface. There we go. This side. So, I want to switch... Oh. Come on. to overworld okay so back to overworld we're not changing dimensions I'm gonna hit the temporal primer hit the helmet regulator over here quantum hammer now while it's flying got that awesome noise sorry it's so loud let me fix that real quick so while it's flying buttons will light up see it through the console that you will light up blue see and you have to hit those as fast as you can oh and levers too oh see if you don't hit them fast enough there will be explosions if you, oh if you're in survival they will cause damage plus the more you hit the faster you hit it the more experience you get I'm not seeing anything light up come on
let's see where I'm at. Um, wait for it to load up. There we go. Oh, apparently I have it set to land in midair. Let me show you that real quick. Where is it? Where is it? Here we go. Ground control. You can land in midair, and you can land on ground. I prefer to land on ground. I forgot to have that checked whenever I took off. Landing pads. You can craft a thing called landing pads. I've never used them, but pretty much it helps direct where you're going to land at. Where's the last one? There's one more I'm looking for. Where is it? Here we are. Let's see, coordinate guesser. It'll tell you the approximate coordinates all together. Where is it yet? Speed, you can go faster, but the faster you go, the more buttons light up, the more dangerous it is. Like I said, if you're in survival, you could get a lot of damage. And coordinate switch. You can have it set to absolute coordinates. So whatever you have up here, 101, 77, 393, it will land there. Or you can just hit hit that button and it's relative. That means if, say, it's an obstructed block or for some odd reason it doesn't want to land there, it will land nearby. Or it can just say, hey, I don't want to land here. I'll move over here. So, yeah, that is the basics behind flying the TARDIS and all the different uh, cool stuff that comes with the TARDIS mod. I hope this was very explanative for you guys, and I hope this helps. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below, and I will try to answer it. Or if I don't know it, I will do research or something. I will try and help you out. Anyways, so I hope you guys enjoyed. Y'all have a wonderful day. Bye!